At the time when governors of the 10 regions across the National Territory are meeting to talk about security concerns across Cameroon, should be noted that reports indicated that there is tension in Kembong, that is a village in Manu Division of the Southwest region of the country. In this newscast, we talk about what is ongoing that has left the population panic stricken since the early hours of this morning in this newscast also ahead come water gets a new assistant general manager it was during a meeting of members of board of directors that was chaired by the minister of water and energy resources basil atangana Kuna. those are headlines stay with us for the details <laughs> Good evening to you once again, ladies and gentlemen. We thank you so much for joining us in this edition of the Primetime Newscast on Equinox Television. We welcome you back from the weekend. We begin right to win the nation's capital. We are only to talk about the meeting of the 10 regional governors of Cameroon that opened in the early hours of this morning, chaired by the Minister of Territory Administration and Decentralization Minister Rene Emmanuel Sadi, that actually indicated that the current situation rocking the two English speaking regions regions of the country is practically under control and that the government is putting every security, security measures in place to ensure that peace reigns in the northwest and the southwest regions of Cameroon. It was during the opening ceremony of the uh, second semester conference of governors in Cameroon that was today in the nation's capital. It is holding under the theme administrative authorities changing in security threats challenges of living together and prospects for sub-regional integration. It is taking place at the time when the notion of living together in the country is at stake. Regional governors are equally, they are going to be meeting between today and Wednesday. It should be noted that the meeting will take place for three days. Let's now have an excerpt of the Minister of Territory Administration and Decentralization, Minister Emmanuel Rene, Rene Emmanuel Sadi was speaking to Equinox Television. The uh, institutions are there, but at the same time, we know that uh, we still have to face some problems in our uh, different regions, in the far of our region, and of course in the east of our region, where the situation is still uh, occupying. And uh, of course, everybody goes in the northwest and the southwest region, where we really have a serious concern. All these uh, issues will be discussed uh, during this meeting. And of course, we will um, assess the situation. We will take stock of the situation and uh, see um, how far things have gone. In the far north region, of course, we can ascertain the fact that uh, we have done a lot concerning the fight against Boko Haram and uh, our compatriots there are really now trying to enjoy peace and stability. And of course also in the uh, northwest and the uh, southwest region, I can say that uh, the uh, situation is under control. Of course, there are still some few things to do, but uh, our people are safe. Uh, the region is safe, and of course, uh, uh, this is why um, we uh, thought that it was necessary for us to come and assess this. And the seat in strike, or better still, the ghost town, is still a tradition in the northwest and southwest regions of Cameroon since the Anglophone crisis escalated. We take you now to Kumbu, that is the chief town of Bui Division, northwest region of Cameroon, to see how businesses and several sectors were practically paralyzed since the early hours of this morning. Details in the following report. Whether at the park, in the market, or on the streets, Activities were on a standstill this Monday in Kumbu, chief town of the Bui Division, northwest region of Cameroon. At the Kumbu main market, the gate was opened, but all the shops therein were closed. Traders were simply respecting the traditional ghost town day observed on Mondays in Anglophone regions of Cameroon. At the St. Augustine Junction Motor Park, only few motorbikes could be spotted. The transport sector was partially paralyzed. 
The atmosphere at the Congo roundabout was quite different. A majority of traders who spoke off camera deal with perishables, reason why they were compelled to display their goods. Kumbu, the chief town of the Bui division, has for the past months had similar picture on Mondays. And barely a few days to end of year feast, the situation is not different. And even with the festive period around the corner, the ghost town was equally observed in the southwest regional headquarters of Boya. Local inhabitants are complaining of hard times few days to the Feast of Nativity. Derek Jato compiled the following report for the 6 p.m. newscast. Boya, 7 a.m. Monday, December 18, 2017, one week to Christmas. I'm surprised that in this morning, Christmas, I've heard nothing. The only thing that is present in the southwest regional capital is the absence of the euphoria that have always been part of such moments in the past. But you expect the victory, we will look at the place, we will see the respect. See if you bought it by now, we will get Kimo's car, we will be getting here nothing. Nothing to nothing, nothing in the water. We just pray that we will get a long life. We will forget a little while for some no problem. Today, many say Christmas Day to them will just be like any other day. It's going to be like a normal day, like the one. Like a normal day, just no day. Here at Moliko, for instance, some business centers are closed this Monday. And for over one year now, Mondays have always been reserved for a sit in strike in Anglophone Cameroon because of the Anglophone problem. And it is this Anglophone problem that southern Cameroonians are holding responsible for the hardship they are witnessing, especially this end of year. That, uh, we don't think it's celebrating to what's the equal when uh, we know that uh, others are suffering uh, in other villages of the southwest, villages like Iwabi, because they are paying for peace and it needs to rain. We cannot be celebrating when we know that this is not present in some part of the region, so we are paying for peace to rain. Though others are already welcoming in their own style, the new year 2018, but say they are still seeing uncertainty looming. Now, Honorable Joseph Banazem spoke to the press in Kumbu, that is in Bui Division, Northwest Region of Cameroon, this Monday. The MP for Kumbu and leader of the SDF Parliamentary Group reiterated the stance and commitment of the principal opposition political party in Cameroon as far as the Anglophone crisis is concerned, that of fighting for the socio-economic and political well-being of the English-speaking population in Cameroon and Cameroonians in general. Let's have the details in the following report continue to t talk in favor of the future, the peaceful future of this country. Honorable Joseph Banazem, during a chat with the press Monday, recalled the state of affairs in the English-speaking regions of Cameroon, which to him should not be ignored by House of Representatives. It is such a burning issue where not only civilians are uh, being killed, soldiers are being killed, economic activities are affected, social life is affected, education and so on and there are refugees we think that it is extremely serious it is extremely serious for us to talk about this if members of parliament cannot talk of uh, such an event such happenings in the country then what will they talk about according to the SDF MP for Kumbu, even ordinary parliamentary businesses are always void of transparency we did in the in the last uh, session adopt the settlement deal that is the accounts of 2016. And uh, just ordinary observation, you find out that there are still so many problems that have not been solved. Contractors have not been paid. And so many of them are so desperate. So many projects have not been completed, and so on. But the settlement bill, 2016 settlement bill, was adopted to have been correct. 
That's why I'm saying that the government is not transparent and uh, we say that uh, uh, when we observe, we, we realize that government is not telling us the, tr the truth in many respects. And that is why uh, the current trend of events in Cameroon must change. The need for change to the Asia parliamentary group leader is urgent. The current Anglophone crisis, according to him, would not have escalated if the government of Cameroon did not violate certain articles of the 1961 constitution. Uh, between 1960 1961 and 1972, we were a federal state. And that constitution of 1961 did in its for Article 47 talk of uh, the form of government that it could not be changed. It was changed and that is a violation of that uh, constitution. Honorable Joseph Banazem made the stance of the Social Democratic Front on the form of the state clear and described discussions on the topic as crucial and pivotal. The SDF is saying that when we take over power, we will revisit the constitution and come back to that 1961 constitution so that we live in a federal state. Other forms of government could be talked of by people who are interested in. And if we are talking of who can attend the dialogue tables, the government knows. The form of government is very, very crucial. That should be now one of the topics in, the, in our discussion. During the press declaration, Honorable Joseph Banazem admitted that SDF MPs are under threats from anonymous persons, though he could not tell with certainty whether it is linked to the just and a parliamentary session. It, it is true. Uh, for quite for some time now, we have been having threats uh, on our phones, uh, uh, SM messages, and so on. And... Uh, while even in the house, we still had, inter, uh, you know, some interrelations with some of the members of parliament. Uh, it is clear uh, that uh, some people may not like we are, what we are saying, but we are patriots in Cameroon, and we are telling Cameroonians what is happening in our country, and we should not be afraid of that. Even if they kill us, uh, whoever is threatening us, you will not kill the situation at hand. The Social Democratic Front has assured that the fight for the socio-economic and political well-being of the Anglophone population and Cameroonians in general would always be a priority. And on the crisis rocking the northwest and the southwest regions of Cameroon, we had to report that there was tension in Kembong, that is a village in Manu, division of the southwest region of Cameroon, are still to confirm allegations that some individuals or some persons died as a result of the confrontation between civilians and security forces. The information is yet to be verified. The population were panic-stricken as a result of the tense atmosphere remained indoors. Several others flee to nearby by peaceful localities. The shooting involved elements of the National Defense Forces and some yet to be identified individuals. The road leading to Mamfe has reportedly been blocked. We are having our ears on the ground. As soon as we are informed, we would equally break the news. Now, Patricia Scotland, that is the Secretary General of the Commonwealth of Nations, began meeting with top administrative, political, and civil society leaders in Cameroon today. She arrived at the nation's capital that was on Friday evening for a five-day working visit in view of trying to give a new and fresh impetus to efforts aimed at watering down the crisis in the two Anglophone regions of the country. She is scheduled to meet with the President of the Republic, the Prime Minister head of government and other members of the opposition party leaders and representatives of civil society upon her arrival she said that she is impatient to get to know Cameroon and her population but more so to discuss concrete ways by which the Commonwealth of Nations can support Cameroon's efforts to take up the urgent challenges that it is facing and one of the major challenges that Cameroon is currently facing is the socio-political tension rocking the two Anglophone regions of the country. Now, talking about the visit of the Commonwealth Secretary General, Cameroon has had a long relationship with the said institution. The marriage between them has seen the Gentleman's Club aiding Cameroon in several ways. In the following report, we are going to be tracing the relationship between Cameroon and the Commonwealth of Nations that has been existing for decades. Now, reporter Simanji Kangebo tells us more in the following story.
Irun and the Gentleman's Club, Common Worlds, have been in union for the past 22 years. During this period of cooperation, the Commonwealth Association has intervened in many areas to aid their member country, Cameroon. In the political domain, Commonwealth has played a key role in the democratization of Cameroon by sending its observers to monitor most of the elections conducted in the country. In 2002, to further strengthen the relationship, Cameroon's presidency created a commission that represented them in the Commonwealth Association. Since the creation of the commission, exchanges between the two entities led to the creation of CONAC, Human Rights and ELECAM, just to name this few. Apart from the political side, Cameroon and Commonwealth have also had some exchanges in the economic, social and and cultural domains. Right Honorable Patricia Janet Scotland, who is in Cameroon, was officially installed as the Secretary General of Commonwealth on April 1, 2016. She is the first woman to handle the position of the Secretary General and second from Caribbean to hold the position. Sumanji so Kangebru, they're reporting now information from the meeting of Board of Directors at Kamwata that took place in the country's economic capital Douala to the chat by the Minister of Water and Energy Resources. It should be noted that Jean-Pierre Bijoka is the new Assistant General Manager of Kamwata. He replaces Ngempa Felix who was sacked during the meeting which took place in the city of Douala today. His appointment is coming barely a few days or just a month after the new General Manager of the Cameroon Water Utilities Corporation was equally appointed in a Board of Directors meeting that took place barely a few weeks ago. Uh, the meeting took place upon instructions from the President of the Republic. Now, let's now accept of the new Assistant General Manager of Kamwata, Jean-Pierre Bichoka, was speaking to Equinox Television. Sure, is what I've just said. The roadmap has been designed a few minutes ago by the Minister in charge of water. And I will give all my energy uh, to how do you call it to implement positively what is in our roadmap. And under what context did the meeting actually take place in the city of Douala? It is taking place at the time when water or access to portable water is a problem in several parts across the national territory. It is equally taking place at the time when the president gave instructions for the water distribution contract to be terminated, as Babla Jonathan tells us in the following report. Cameroon's head of state, Paul Bia, instructed government not to renew the water distribution contract with Cameroon's de Zoo, CDE, since March 2016. He ordered the managing director of the Cameroon Water Utilities Company, Camwater, to take without delay all measures leading to the formal termination of the contract and for Cam Water to begin ensuring the distribution of water across the country as it was before. The presidential instructions stated that all the measures to terminate the contract with CDA must be effective latest 31st August 2017 in order to respect the 10-year period stipulated in the contract. The measures include the inventory, evaluation and recording in the accounts of the assets and rights assigned to water distribution services and the restitution of assets to be returned to the state. All these were to be done before the official transfer of all assets and services of CDA to come water. More than a year later, a dark cloud is looming over all these. It is unclear what has been done so far, and consequently, President Paul Beer is yet to issue a decree transferring the assets and services of CDA to come water while water crisis continue hitting several parts of the country, especially big cities. Babla Jonathan, the reporting. Now, municipal authorities in Limbe have voted the sum of 1 billion 135 million as budget for the year 2018, but would the budget be enough to tackle the problems of bad roads, amongst other several challenges plaguing the said locality? Davis Maimo took part in the said council session. He tells us more in the following report. In the three subdivision, which is one, 
of the three subdivisions that make up Limbe municipality is blessed with enormous touristic potentials as it is where the slave trade village in Cameroon is found and equally rich in nature with timber and other plants of high economic and scientific purpose preserved at the Bimbia Bonadikumbu Forest Reserve. Limbe 3 is also where the greatest amount of crayfish, better known as Njanga, is cash and smoke. However, this subdivision remains the least if compared to other two sisters' councils of Limbe 1 and 2. It is for this reason that the mayor, Seke Diboti Luma, say he has tailored the 2018 budget for the Limbe 3 council to be one of disenclaving the entire subdivision and development oriented. Where a road passes development force that has been their preoccupation from ages past and in years to come. With 647 million civil francs increase as compared to 2017 budget, giving a total of 1 billion 135 million, the council has set aside some most accomplished project for next year. The approval by favor of the Limbe 3 housing scheme. During the last session, I mentioned that the primary requirements for the actualization of this project is the availability of land. Our goal has been to foster development and better the lives of the population. However, there is no stopping us now. We have fought a good fight. We will finish the race. The mayor called on all stakeholders to put hands on deck in realizing the prospect for 2018. And the display of cultural heritage marked the closing of the Southwest Cultural Festival that ended in Boya at the weekend. It was equally an opportunity for the Minister of Arts and Culture, Minister Nassis Mole Kombi, to give or to recognize some actors that are resident in the southwest region of Cameroon. Derek Jatu tells us more in the following report. Many say the 2017 Southwest Cultural Festival has ended in style. And the Cameroon Minister of Art and Culture, who actively took part, used the platform to recognize some Southwest based artists for their contributions in promoting culture. I felt special and honored, but at the same time humble is to hear the Minister of Arts and Culture, Professor Narcisse Mwele Kombi, to acknowledge me as uh, in his speech. Mr. Blasio Sungwame was one of those artists appreciated by Minister Narcisse Mwele Kombi. But I want to believe that uh, I was recognized by him because of the numerous books that I have been opportune to publish. And amongst those books, you have uh, one which is titled, I Have Eight. The second one is uh, entitled From Hell to Paradise. The other one is uh, titled uh, The Healing Word, and then Be Healed. So, so far, I have written five books. The 2017 South West Cultural Festival painted a true picture of a people. For instance, there are different tribal identities that were exhibited in songs, outfits, and traditional houses, among others, gave tourist reasons to stop at the cultural village. The, the cultural festival succeeded in bringing together people from all extracts, national and international. I witnessed the presence, the presence of ambassadors, the presence of diplomats, and so on and so forth. But the organizers say what was almost absent was financial support. It is necessary for uh, our elites, our companies to mobilize in order to finance that kind of activity. Hoping for the better, the appointment was taken for the third edition. <laughs> It is on that note that we come to the end of this edition of the Primetime Newscast on Equinox Television. We also thank you so much for joining us, wishing you a blessed stay in the company of our programs. Until we meet again, goodbye.